Hey everybody, welcome back to the Tipsy Ghost. We're your tipsy hosts, Sarah, Sarah, and Lindsay. Hey guys. Hello. Welcome back to our holiday gift to you, our listeners. Salem. <laughs> we are giving you Salem. <laughs> For the entire month of December. Haunted December. Haunted holidays. Haunted holidays. Yes. <laughs> Haunted December. That makes sense. Alliteration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm Haunted big, holidays. I'm a big fan. Welcome back to the Haunted Holidays with the Tipsy Ghost. Okay, so before <laughs> we get into the Haunted Holidays, uh-huh. which is an HH. I like those. I'm going to tie this in. Have you heard of a hobby horse? No. No. Another HH. Hobby horse is the horse head with the stick. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I didn't know it was called that. <laughs> did you know that there are competitions? Yes, I've seen them. Where humans have a hobby horse. So the horse head with the stick. Uh huh. Like a child's toy. Yep. They compete like they're actual horses. Like they ride they, around. They they gallop. Yes. I have never heard of this before, and I am it's disturbed. <laughs> and they, of course, it's on TikTok. That's how you guys know of it. <laughs> they, they jump over like actual horse. Jumps. So they're jumps. jumping. Oh, yeah. On their two feet. <laughs> oh, and they're like scored, and it, it's like a big competition. They get... Mm. I hate humanity sometimes. <laughs> you know what? Good for them. I'm just glad that the they have a People are hobby. running around on, on like horse sticks. These these horse sticks are like thousands of dollars, too. They ain't cheap from you know, and they're, Walmart. And they're hurtling these jumps. <laughs> like literally hurtle, like leg out to the side, leg in front There's with a the stick. There's a event already about no, jumping over it's things. In a, it's in a but dirt not arena. not horses. <laughs> It's not a horse. Not with fake horse heads. <laughs> Imagine the so track they're doing and field it with a stick competition. between their legs. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's a joke there. Wow. No, there's not because this it's is serious. real. <laughs> it's very serious. They win money. I'm going to have no comment on this because I feel like if I have a comment, I will offend someone. <laughs> Imagine a track and field. I don't want to imagine race. it anymore. <laughs> In the dirt arena, are these like, men? Some of them are <laughs> no, they're no. mostly females. I was gonna say, of course, they're females because <laughs> men would <laughs> they would get hurt. Oh, no, that chocolate covered pretzel really <laughs> hit me that right stick <laughs> in between their right legs. The frontal. That's what they happens when we don't hurt. have dinner. I know the frontal lobe did is you really not taking eat a hit. You came right I did it like four thirty. Oh. I had one and a fourth chicken strip. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had Chick Fil A, <laughs> so I just learned about hobby Chick Fil A, but they don't have my favorite menu item anymore. <laughs> Every time I pull up, it says we are out of these items because like what? national shortages. I don't know, and they're out of like five items. What I'm are like, you missing? The cool wrap. I like the wrap. Oh my god! Even your wraps. I this swear is to God. McDonald's all I know. over again. I'm still mad at McDonald's for getting rid of grilled <laughs> I chicken. They, I thought they brought back the snack wrap. No, McDonald's no, got rid of Sonic all grilled did. chicken. Oh. There is no grilled chicken. I'm mad at Sonic. <laughs> There's no grilled chicken, anything. I can't get the salad there. I can't get the grilled chicken sandwich. Sonic got rid of cheddar bites, and that is my one item. Don't get me started on the cheddar bites. I'm so mad at them. They're like broccoli bites. We, Fuck you, Sonic. They have I broccoli bites now. Yes, love broccoli. Every bites time there. I get there, they're like, tops. "Do you want some mozzarella so sticks?" I'm like, "No, I don't want mozzarella sticks. It is not the same thing." What about um, they have jalapeno poppers there? No, it's I don't. Not- I'm spicy. Okay. No. I'm okay, so I like mad all at those them. things, and I don't we like want the cheddar, cheddar peppers. Bites. I'm so mad at them. <laughs> oh, I so don't like the I googled. Bites. It. I had looked on Reddit, and it's a supply chain issue. It is, and they're like, "I'm saying we don't have those anymore." And last time, I was like, "Well, maybe you should take them off the menu." Yeah, they are off the menu where I go. It is not. It is still on my menu at my Sonic. They have like a sign. Dang. These are not available. Anyways, haunted <laughs> holidays. How do we get off on this? <laughs> the hobby horse. <laughs> the hobby horse. God damn it. Okay. Sorry, haunted holidays. Haunted holidays. So <laughs> let's all share our favorite part of Salem. Sarah, yeah. what was your favorite My part? My favorite part was the haunted walking tour. I loved it so much. We had a local guide, and he was also a history teacher. Like, how much better does it get? Right. He was awesome. If you're going to go on a history walking tour. Go with a history teacher who lives in Salem. Go with a history Salem. teacher who is from Salem, yes. I feel like. I thought he did a great job. I really enjoyed him. But mostly I enjoyed the content. Because I, what I enjoyed about it is that it was not all about the witches and the trials. Yeah, exactly. It was a lot about how Salem was founded, that the first millionaire in America was from Salem. Yes, there was a whole street called like Millionaire's Way, uh-huh. uh, something something along those lines. We got to know, go see these weeks, old yeah. houses. and I love old houses. She does love old houses. And these houses were all from the 1700s. They have no yards. Right. No, no They had yards. no yards. 
And they were just like bizarrely placed. You owned a plot of land uh-huh. and you decided to put your house there. Yes. We were in little spots of Massachusetts and there were new yards and the roads, like road maps in Kansas and Missouri tend to make a grid, right? They're blocks. They're, yeah. they're blocks. But these ones were like, you felt like you were driving through somebody's front yard and then right. you were driving through somebody's like actual living room. And then here you <laughs> yeah. go. Here's this house. Yeah. Like he's like. We're standing outside of front, somebody's front door, literally. And he's like, all right, we have to be kind of quiet because I know they have kids here. Yeah. And so I'm going to be quiet and tell you guys about the history. It was so bizarre. But I loved it because we were it. right there. And then you walk through into Millionaire's Ways when he said that was the first road that happened that went like mm, east to west, something mm-hmm. something like that, where they actually – wider for cars. Well, actually, it was um, horse carriages. Horse carriages, yeah. So that they could make a full turn. Yes. And I know this because they have those in Lawrence, too, mm-hmm. the wide cobblestone streets. So anyways, I thought that was super interesting that, you know, one street was like houses all haphazard. The next street over was like everything was looked like it was in order and these huge, huge houses. And he did say that most of the houses on that street were all single family homes. Mm-hmm. And they've I'm like, kept who can everything. afford that? Right. Well, and they've kept everything restored beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say <laughs> everything is restored beautifully like everything has been kept i mean yes. i can't believe these people live in houses older than our country and just out of curiosity i went on like zillow and looked at people's oh, houses gosh. how much <laughs> millions oh yeah in the millions for sure and they're I'm just sure. they're beautiful yeah. i want to move there i want to live there mm-hmm. i want to move to really i want to move to marblehead because that's where we stayed marblehead was we'll beautiful. get into that in a different time because that was another favorite of course but we also got to touch on a little bit of the paranormal history on our walking tour. We did, and I'm going to elaborate on some of that. Ooh, you don't say. So instead of just picking one place, I picked three. Oh, I love it. So I'm going to go over three haunted locations. Okay. Let's hear it. The first. It's probably the most well-known place in Salem because of a little movie we called Hocus Pocus. I've never heard of it. <laughs> I don't call it Hocus Pocus. <laughs> what do you call I'm it? just kidding. I do. I do. So this is the Ropes Mansion, a.k.a. Allison's ha- house. Allison's house. I was going to say whose house, but you beat me to it. I knew. <laughs> I know who it is. So this was used as the front of Allison's house. And fun fact, we learned on this tour, the three witches yeah, never, never even actually... went to Salem. They never stepped foot. Kind of a bummer. That's Mm-mm. disappointing. Yeah, it is. So we knew that, like, obviously the movie was not shot in Salem, right? But well, they some never, of it wasn't, right? That the exterior shots were, yeah. But that they never even set foot in Salem. I will say though, we saw Ropes Mansion initially at nighttime, and we did. Oh my god, it's beautiful. It was beautiful. We did, and then we went back in the daytime and took a picture with it. Also beautiful, but better at night. Yes. So this is the huge white house that you see when you're you know, Allison's house. And it is the Ropes Mansion because it was built in 1720 and owned by Judge Nathaniel Ropes. I will say this is not privately owned anymore. It is owned by the city. So it is used as a like museum, history, like historical society kind of thing. They have events there. So. It's kind of like a public area. It's too. a public you can go area. In the, in the gardens in the back. You can go in the gardens in the back, which I will talk about the gardens. Ooh, sorry. So the house is at 318 Essex Street, and it is believed to be haunted by Judge Ropes and his relative, Abigail Ropes. So this is not his daughter. This is not his wife. It is just a distant relative. Okay. Got making it. that known, even though they have the same last name. Yeah. Good to know. Like I said, it's built in 1720, but really the story is going to start in 1774. Judge Ropes was mobbed by a gang of patriots, and they were throwing mud and stones at his house because they wanted him to publicly denounce his loyalties to good old GB, Great Britain. Oh, I was like, George Bush? Uh, (laughs) Yes, to George Bush in 1774. Seems early, but okay. (laughs) Seems premature. (laughs) Um, So he did not respond to this, and they just threw stuff at his house and then left but he did die the next day from smallpox oh bummer and there are reports that he still haunts this building reasons why is because the former caretakers before it was sold rick and georgette stafford they took a picture and they saw two hands of a man that was sitting on the couch in the front hall all they saw was the hands though they didn't see the full body apparition but they said um i'm saying adam's family isn't there a hand yes there is just gone hand it 
isn't it? No, it's, it? it's the, it's it the is hairy, the hairy guy. creature. Oh, okay. I think hand is just hands. I think it is. Hands? <laughs> Plural? Hans. <laughs> <laughs> Hand and his wife. Hanzina? Uh-huh. Yes. Thing. Oh, okay. Oh, thing. So close. <laughs> his name is Thing T. Thing. Hans. Often referred to <laughs> as just Thing. <laughs> thing T. <tea>, thing. <laughs> thing T. <tea>, thing. <laughs> thing. <laughs> Thing to thing is worse. <laughs> Why is it going to be so official? Oh, I okay, don't know. anyhow, thing, okay. he lives at this mansion. He clearly. lives at the mansion. Yeah. But what is interesting about this picture, you know, it was captured in the front hall on this couch. This is the same spot where Judge Nathaniel Ropes and future President John Adams oh. argued politics in mm. 1769 over a lunch. Second, okay. Second president of the United States. Second. He might, was he president then in 1769? No, he wasn't because it wasn't a country it wasn't yet. A country yet. But the main story here at Ropes Mansion involves a fire. Sadly, yes. Abigail Ropes was born on October 20th, 1796, and she was the daughter of a another Nathaniel Ropes. They just like to reuse names. They, you, they, they really did. They like to reuse names. So this is not the Judge Nathaniel Ropes. This is another Nathaniel Ropes and his wife, Sarah. Well, All right. So <laughs> Abigail died on April 23rd, 1839. Quote, unmarried from burns received when carrying coals from one room to another. Her Aww. obituary even stated that she had, quote, a distressing illness of three weeks caused by her clothes accidentally taking fire. I'm sure it was distressing. So she essentially was carrying coals from fireplace to fireplace and caught her clothes on fire, but she lived for three weeks. That's you had terrible. to put coals under the bed. You had right. to put coals under the bed to, to warm keep it. keep your bed warm because yes. you don't have central heat. Not in the seventeen or eighteen hundreds. Seventeen hundreds. No, she died on eighteen thirty nine. Yeah, okay. So she caught her clothes on a fire, and then what's horrifying to me is that she lived for three weeks after that. That is <sighs> so burns are one of the most painful things you yeah. can experience. Ugh, terrible. Poor girl. Especially can you imagine that time with no medical treatment really? Also, can no. you imagine how hot your bed is with <laughs> coals under that? All right, so reports say that since, obviously, this occurred, there have been mysterious fires that have occurred only in that room on the third floor where she died. Hmm. Reports have also included a burglar or fire alarm going off and on, which the police and the fire department come out to the house frequently because of that. Hmm. There has been reports of a full-bodied female apparition with long, dark hair pulled into a bun peeking out of the window. Oh, I'd love to see that. Most recently, though, in August 18, 2009, they were renovating the house, and a heating gun that's used for removing paint off the walls was mysteriously ignited and destroyed the entire third floor in the attic. I was picturing, like, a temperature gun. <laughs> it was not a temperature gun. Damn it. I don't know what a heating gun for removing paint is. I feel like it's it like he- a... It heats a, the glue. A flame thrower. I don't think so. I think you, like, roll it against the wall and it warms the glue and you can pull out the... Like a a hair dryer? Kind of. Kind of like that. So it warms up the wall and then it should, like, peel away. Just like I said. I don't remember you saying that. (laughs) Three (laughs) three times should I have done it for? That's what it looks like. (laughs) Oh, my God. Weird. Okay. Heats up the glue. (laughs) So it's not a flamethrower. Got it. But kind of more like a hair dryer. But something that in 2009 should not just mysteriously ignite. I mean, it shouldn't. Unless there's a recall on the product. That's true. I did not check to see what brand (laughs) this was. There have always been other reports of fires in the 1800s, but again, always on this third floor. There's also a garden behind the mansion that you can go and look at, which we did not do. Disappointed. It is reportedly haunted. (laughs) <laughs> so visitors who frequent the gardens claim to hear disembodied voices and feel taps on their shoulders and when they turn around no one is there it is believed that this is a residual haunting nothing evil just friendly so they don't know if it's judge ropes who's roaming his garden or if it's abigail who made her way outside to get some peace in the afterlife because she suffered she sure did so that is ropes mansion Rupp's Mansion is beautiful. It is very beautiful. I wish we could have spent some time inside, yeah. but that's okay. We got to take pictures out front. We, we did. did. We, we didn't really have any time. We were so busy. We were very busy. We really only had two full days in Salem. We're going to go to the Samuel Pickman house, which we passed by many times, and we probably didn't even realize that this is what it was I called. I remember hearing it. Wait, was it by the cemetery? 
It is. Yeah, I remember. It's owned by the Peabody Essex Museum, which is right there by the cemetery. Across the street. Yes. Listen, I paid attention because I loved every minute. So it's on the corner of Charter and Liberty Street. And it kind of, so Peabody Essex Museum is their art museum. And it's on one side of the street. And then across the street is this building. And then there's the cemetery for the witches. Memorial, all of this. So this is that house in between the two. So it was built in 1664, and it is thought to be one of Salem's oldest buildings. They are not sure quite when it was built, but that is the first record they have of it. 1664. Oh, my God. That is the earliest thing that I can remember, because the oldest house that I saw in Marblehead was 1680. And we walked by this. It's still standing. That That was 100 plus years Mm -hmm. before. Just my mind is blown. It's, It's incredible, honestly. So, obviously, now it is owned by the Peabody Essex Museum. Like I said, they're just across the street. There have been reports of seeing a full-bodied apparition of a little girl that looks out the window. So, it is a Uh two-story building, and they say they see it out the second-story window. But some claim that it is home to a demonic entity. Oh, not the demons. So, there's a couple myths and lores here. We're going to see what those are, and then also there's some truth-based stories here. All right, so like I said, some say that it is home to a demonic entity. One story is that of a husband and a wife who lived in the Samuel Pickman house with their seven-year-old daughter. And it's rumored that the husband went insane by an evil entity, much like what happens in The Shining by Stephen King. <laughs> Thank this you. was the house literally right next yes. to that old cemetery that we walked That's through it. and we walked by, right? That's it. Yeah, okay. So according to legend, he chained his daughter up in the attic and Aww. tortured her. And left her to starve. And then tied his wife to a tree and killed her by pouring hot wax all over her body and leaving her to die a slow and painful death. Wow. And then left and fled Salem, leaving both the mother and the child to die. So people on tour, they report taking pictures and claiming that they see an evil entity in the windows of their pictures. But this appears to be an urban legend because there's no historical records to back up these claims of this man who did this to his wife and daughter. But there are lots of photo anomalies that are that people capture, such as orbs and mists around the house, as well as apparitions in the windows. But there is some truth here that probably this legend came from, and that is of a woman named Dorothy Talby, and she's a Puritan woman. She was a respectful leader of the church, but quickly started to change. She became more erratic, more violent, to the point that her husband complained of her bizarre behaviors to the authorities in the 1600s. I'm not really sure if there was a police force. I doubt it. Doubt it. It was probably probably the church. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So probably complained of her behaviors to the Puritan church, which did not go well. Yeah. And the town sentenced her in 1637 to be chained to a post oh for, my God. quote, frequently laying hands on her husband to the danger of his life. So just chained to a post. They didn't sentence her to death. But right. But for how long? And was she given food and blah, blah, blah? Probably not. Probably not. Puritans weren't exactly the kindest people. She was reported to have, quote, melancholy or spiritual delusions. Okay. Um, she threatened to kill her husband and her child. And then... About a year later, December 1638, she was actually hanged because she did kill her three-year-old daughter. Oh, no. She named her. And remember, these are Puritan times, so they would name them, like, bizarre names. Sure. She named her Difficult. She named her child Difficult? She did. Hmm. Okay. (laughs) I have nothing to say. Three years old, so she killed her by breaking her neck. So she testified at her trial that God had told her to murder her daughter. Um, The governor of Massachusetts Bay Colony, because we weren't a country, so there was no Massachusetts, it was just Bay Colony. So this was Governor John Winthrop. He believed that she was possessed by Satan. Of course. Nowadays, obviously, probably had some postpartum depression or something. So at her trial, she refused to speak until Governor Winthrop threatened to pile stones on her. She you know, again, admitted that the devil told her to do this. God told her to do this. And when it came time to hang, she fought the execution the entire time. She took the noose or not the noose. I'm sorry. The like sack off of her head and put it in between the rope and the, her neck to try to alleviate the pressure. They pulled that away. And then she was trying to grab for the ladder to prevent herself from hanging in. Obviously didn't work. She 
was hung. So that is an actual story that actually did happen. And maybe because of that, the lore has transferred over to this house, but people report seeing anomalies and child children in the windows. All right. Just for fun. I didn't do a whole story on this, but I just wanted to point this out. Bunghole liquors. Yes. Did you know that it had a haunted past? It, I do, because I know okay. the history of bunghole liquors, but okay. please feel free to share. I was just going to say that they have a ghost cat uh-huh. who wanders around, and it used to be a funeral home. Yep, that is Sir Bunghole. Sir Bunghole <laughs> of the liquor family. <laughs> it was a funeral home. Oh it, this is just a liquor store that we went to, and Sarah loved the name Bunghole Liquors. <laughs> okay, there's a small history to that, because I have been to Salem once when I was really young, and... That is what I remember about going to see bunghole liquors. It's bunghole liquors. And also, I watched a lot of Beavis and Butthead growing um, up. Yes. Last place I'm going to talk about is Rockefeller's. We talked about this place. We passed by it many times. It's the Daniel Lowe and Co. building. Yes. Okay. And Rockefeller's is a restaurant that is there. Got it. We did not eat there, but this is the story of the Blue Lady. So there is some lore here as well and some, you know, we don't know what's true, what's not. Okay. But the building here, it used to be a department store, and it was also a church back in the day. There are reports of a black-suited minister who committed suicide when the building was a church in a meeting house. Before it was a department store. So people report still seeing this man wearing a hat and in a black tux. Okay. Who knows? So the history starts with Daniel Lowe. He moved into the building in 1874. Um, He turned it from the church and a meeting house into a clothing shop and a dry goods store. Then he also brought in a jewelry store and a gift business shop. So kind of like a little mall in this store. He died in 1911 and his son Seth took over the store until 1939. His widow then took over. But eventually the store sold to William Follett in 1950s. And he kind of converted it, and then the restaurant Rockefeller's opened in 2003. So the Blue Lady. So one night in 2003, when Rockefeller's was opening and they were trying to post pictures to their social media pages, they took a photo at night, posted it on the restaurant website, and people were quick to point out that in the picture is a full-bodied apparition of a lady in front of the building. And so, of course, they capitalized on this. They made T-shirts. They made glasses. They did all of this stuff and said, come see the lady in blue. And that's where that really started. Okay. Dang it. (laughs) We didn't get to see the lady in blue. We did not. So visitors and guests have reported seeing the lady in the downstairs hallway, and they would hear screams, disembodied crying. And it reports that it sounded like someone was being buried alive. And these were mainly from other women who would hear this. That's terrible. So here is the actual history. There are underground tunnels that are obviously now filled in with concrete, but they used to connect the site to other buildings around downtown Salem. And some were even used as part of the Underground Railroad. So it is now believed that perhaps people were buried here when William Follett in the 1950s took over and filled all of these tunnels with concrete. They think that perhaps those bodies are now, like, permanently entombed. I see. Perhaps slaves. Aw. So other lore includes that maybe this woman, she was murdered in the tunnels. So there's this whole story, and we heard this on our tour of, you know, she wanted to marry this one man, and this sailor wanted to marry her. He went away, and while he was away, she was going to marry this guy that she was actually in love with. He came back early, killed them both. Another lore is that the sailor impregnated her and then was going to marry her, but instead murdered her and buried her in the tunnels. And they were talking a little bit about the alleyway, right? Mm -hmm. That's where we were. One of the lore is that maybe that happened there. Maybe it happened in the alleyway because it used to be a church. So maybe she was waiting here to marry her her boo thing and then sailor showed up. (laughs) I bet that's what she called it. <laughs> she did. Sweet boo thing. <laughs> Sweet boo thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's unclear because there's no real record of any of that, but there is evidence of desecrated human remains that are buried beneath the building in these tunnels. It's sad that, that they're forgotten. And they think that two of them are runaway slaves that are believed to be buried there who are trying to escape through the tunnels. So the truth behind this or the history behind this is there are actually underground networks that did exist and they were filled in concrete in 1950s, but 
How many bodies are in there? Who knows? Reports from the restaurant include glass mysteriously shattering to the point that people will be drinking from their drinks and their glasses will just explode. Oh, no. I would like that. <laughs> um, Slice your hand. That's fine. In the name of Should hauntings. Have gone there. Yes. Got it. A bartender reportedly saw a glass levitate from the bar, bounce up in the air, and then land back without breaking. I would love that. And then, like I said, people report hearing disembodied voices and screaming. And that is the story of the Lady in Blue in Rockefeller's Restaurant. Okay. And you can go there and order a cocktail called The Lady in Blue. Lady in Blue. Thank you, Lindsay. You are welcome. Salem has a lot of haunted places. Yes. Boydson has a whole book dedicated to it. What? I don't remember you buying a book about it. It is called Ghosts of Salem. Haunts when did you get that? Of the Witch City. In Salem. I don't remember that. So I read that, and that's where I got these stories uh-huh. from. There are quite a few stories in there, but... I, I mean, really wanted to pick three that we remembered places we'd been. It seems like the perfect setting for paranormal haunted happenings. I mean, it's got a ton of history. Any place with tons of history has well, and violent, like, traumatic history. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I get it. Okay, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in this week to our paranormal Salem holiday. Haunted holidays. Haunted holiday happenings. I almost said holiday happenings. We're, oh, gonna get we're adding words every <laughs> See, time. See, because I'm remembering now, in Salem, it was their 40th anniversary of, of haunted, haunted happenings. happenings. That's why I want to say happenings. That's why. Okay, I can't say that. And I was like, that. it's for me. It's my 40th <laughs> haunted happenings. Yeah. They started it in 1982. They did. Look at that. They were like, a witch is being born. She was born. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was right before my birthday, so obviously. <laughs> All right, you guys can always catch us out at thetipsyghost.com and find our socials linked from there or send us an email at thetipsyghost at gmail.com. Catch us out. <laughs> I knew you were both going to say something. <laughs> I didn't and say Sarah's thing. looking back and forth between I'm like us. <laughs> I'm looking at the shadows so I didn't laugh. Catch us out. <laughs> yeah. Catch me outside. Uh, how about that? No, no. Please give us a five star rating and a great review anywhere you listen to podcasts. We really appreciate it and it really does help. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. We will catch you next week. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.